Hi everybody, and welcome to my Guild Wars 2 with a guide. I'm an elementalist and played around 10,000 hours on it, mostly as dagger dagger, staff and sword, and I wanted to share with you my experience and some tips to help you. My guide is both for beginners and for more experienced players looking for build, rotations, combos, and advanced fighting tricks and tips. So let's go. Here is a table of contents. First, I explain shortly how Weaver works, the dual attunement mechanism, what is different from Elementalist, the strong and the weak points. Then I'll show you the difference between two builds I'll share with you, Sword Dagger Weaver for PvP and World vs. World Warming, and Staff Zerk Weaver for PvE and World vs. World Zerg. For these two builds, I'll explain you the traits, the build, a review of each skills, I will show you some rotations and combo. At the end of the guide, I'll explain you a few tips how to make teleport combo, how to stack bone, how to fight versus condition, etc. You can just skip to the part you want to see or watch the full video. Enjoy! Weavers can be attuned to two elements at once. When attuning to a new element, the current main hand attunement switches to the off hand, while the new attunement is placed on the main hand. You can attune to the same element twice in a row resulting in a typical single attunement skill bar. The first thing to note is this bar below your attunement. The first half of the bar shows your primary attunement and the second half of your secondary attunement. The first three skills are based on your main hand weapon and primary attunement, while your four and five skills are based on your off hand and secondary attunement. Your three skill is bend is based on your main hand weapon, but both attunements. So if you're on water, fire, or fire water, your third skill will be always dual attack. Let's speak about the weakness of River. Due to this dual attunement mechanism, River is more difficult to play than a mentalist, and one of the most difficult class to master. Rotations are harder, you need to train or anticipate which skill you want, and you cannot get immediately some skills. For example, here I'm core elementalist. I want one specific, specific skill, water 5 to heal. I just have to switch water, water 5 is available. Here I'm weaver. I want the same skill, water 5. I cannot get it immediately. I need to go water first. Here is available water 1, 2, but not 3, 4, 5. I need to attune again to whatever attunement to get water 4, 5. And attune to water to get water 3, 4, 5. This is the problem with River. Skills 1 and 2 are the only immediately available. Skills 3 are not immediately available. You need to double attune to get them. Skills 4 and 5 are not immediately available. You need to switch attunement one more time to get them. But now let's see what makes the River so interesting and exciting. Other profession got 10 skills. Elementalist got 20 skills. Weaver got 26 skills. 6 new skills for each main hand weapon. More skills mean more combo, more DPS, less time waiting for cooldown. Weaver traits are great. They can give boost significantly your DPS, your condition clean, or your survivability with barrier. To sum up, Weaver is harder, more risky, but more rewarding if you know how to play it. On top of this, River is at the moment the class that can provide the biggest DPS of the whole game. Now let's compare the two builds I'm going to share with you, Staff and Sword River. Staff build is mostly for PvE on large fight in World vs. World. Sword is for PvP on small fight in World vs. World, like 5v5 or solo. Staff provides the biggest DPS of the game, and nearly don't have condition damage. Sword is average DPS that benefits from boss power and condition damage. Staff attacks cover a very large area and is able to hit lots of players at the same time. Sword is able to hit only 1 to 3 persons at the same time. It's better for smaller scale fights. Staff is a range weapon and Sword is nearly only melee weapon. Staff offers very low survivability on heal and Sword offers insane heal. Lots of invulnerability. Survive is insane. Staff is very selfish, you nearly don't heal or burn your group with this build. 
and the opposite sword is able to heal and bone a lot your team. This staff build is not efficient in solo. You need a team to heal you, to protect you, to buff you. You are very squishy and weak, but you got the biggest defense of the game. Sword build is both efficient solo or in small group. You can support them and add a decent DPS. To sum up, this staff build is a pure DPS role, and this sword build is very versatile, able to heal, to DPS, and to support. Now let's speak about the sword build. Here are the weakness and the strong point of this weapon. Sword offers low to average DPS, only melee skills, it's hard to play if you are too squishy. Due to the mediocre DPS, you need a more offensive or fun weapon like Dagger. Focus, in my opinion, will not be efficient because Sword is already a defensive weapon. With Focus, you will be impossible to kill, but also unable to kill anyone. This is why Sword is great. Insane defensive skills. Two evade skills with low cooldown. A 4 second water fail to heal with lots of combo, leap, blast, making survivability insane. Good mobility, it, it benefits from both power and constant damage. Each two skills are mobile skills to get close or far from enemy. Each auto attack skills are pretty decent with ok DPS. Water 2 skill is found away the best defensive skill in the game, on the life savior. I'll explain you a little why. So here is a sword dagger build. First I'm taking Arcana 3 to 1. This minor threat I can progress. Before December patch you gain furry while switching attunement. Now you gain mind. This is a huge nerf, but you can take advantage of this change to mild stack with constantly switching attunements before the fight. Arcane Precision is a good threat, but it's mostly useful in air to apply weakness, or the conditions are too bad on short. Renewing Stamina is also a good threat. Take it if you don't have enough Vigor on dodge. But I prefer Arcane Abatement, because you get like 400 heal each time you swap attunement. It's a cool free heal. You also create a spell when getting full damage. Can be useful in World vs. World, you can get free Fire Field or Air Field to combo with. Elemental Attunement is your best minor threat. Each time you attune fire, you gain 2 stack of might. It synergizes great with a new Arcan Power threat. Each time you go water, you gain regeneration and cure one condition. In air, you gain speed, which makes you gain regeneration thanks to river threat, so you cure another condition. And in earth, you gain protection, which is probably one of the most important boons of the game. It's like free 500 toughness. Here, elemental contingency is a must-have because it's the only way to get Retaliation Boon, another very powerful boon. It's also your only way to get Furry, since Arcane Prowess Furry threat was nerfed. It's also free Vigor free protection, a great threat, so always take it, always. Here, Evasive Arcana is also a must-have with this build. You gain a free heal while dodging in water. It also cures two conditions. And in Earth, you gain a Blast, to use in your Fire Field or Water Field. You also can notice that the skill created by the dodge will proc your healing singlet. It counts as a skill, so it's 303 heal. In Water, I take 1-3-1. One, one. Thirsting Mist, this minor threat is great, because it scales very good with healing power. With this build, it heals you for 200 each second. It's insane. I go for Sosank Ice, it's a free random frost aura to mitigate damage, and a free random regeneration which will cure also one condition. Healing Repel is another cool minor threat, it will heal you for 2000 each time you go in water. As an, as an elementalist, leaving an entunement makes a cooldown on it about 8 seconds. As a river, it's 4 seconds. This means that you can use this threat twice more than Elementalist, it's massive. Aquamancer's training is the best choice here with Sword because it lowers the cooldown of Water 2, which is far and away your best skill. On top of that, it increases of 10% your DPS when you are full life. Finally, I take Cleansing Water. It's your most important threat. 
it's mandatory and it's the only way you have to cure condition. Basically, each time you gain regeneration, you cure one condition. So, switching in water gives regeneration to cure condition. Water too cure also a condition. But this threat also synergizes great with River Grandmaster threats that I will show you now. In River I take 332. Master Fortitude is a must have if you have a sword, because it's 300 free vitality, which means 3000 free HP, it's great. Elemental Refreshment is great because it gives you some barrier each time you use a dual skill. Barrier scales with healing power, and you got a lot of healing power with this build. So it's a free 600 life for each dual skill you use. Here, all of the three threats are good, but I prefer bold stud elements, which gives you a free stability each time you use a stance. So you are nearly permanently under stability. But you also can go for swift revenge to get more DPS and more condition clean. Or you can take also reverse progress to increase your condition damage. It's up to you. Elemental polyphonesis minor trade is just free bonus stats. Okay, then here I take Woven Stride. It's a must have. Because each time you gain speed, you gain regeneration boon. And remember, with Water Threat, each time you get regeneration, you clean a condition. This means that these skills, Switch Air, Air 1, Air 2, Air Dagger 5, and Twist of Fates, also cure one condition. This is insane. And if you are still in trouble with condition, just take Swift Revenge. You will gain speed for each dual attack, so it's again more condition clean. That's it for the threat. As you can see, the threat gives you a lot of heal, burn, and condition clean. These threats are all great to survive. Let's talk about the gear now. I'm using Mender Amulet in PvP. In World vs. World, the exact bit is in the description. But to explain to you, it is based on the martial stats, power, heal, precision, condition damage. Healing power is very great with Sword River because you got so many ways to heal that it would be stupid to don't use it. Sword benefits from both power and condition damage, so this gear fits perfectly for Sword River. I recommend you to add some toughness to this gear. You got enough vitality because you got a free 300 vitality thanks to this river threat while holding a sword. But you need more toughness, so you can add some soldiers of Cavalier's gear. In World vs. World, I'm using the Durability Rune. It's a must-have because it's free vitality, free toughness. You need it because martial stats don't offer these defensive stats. You also gain 20% boon duration, which is great because you got a lot of boon. In PvP, sadly, this rune is not available, so I use Exuberance Rune. Because just insane stats bonus. You gain a total of 400 very useful stats like power, precision, vitality, and health. On boss game mode, I use energy, CGL, it's mandatory, it's a free extra dodge. On world versus world, I use a, a second CGL, CGL of concentration, to increase my bone duration. On PvP, you can use whatever you want. CGL of concentration is not available. Let's talk about the skills now. For healing, I take the Signet of Restoration. It's very efficient because each time you cast a spell or a skill, you get some heal. Switching attunement counts as a skill, so it heals you. Just look. If you switch water, you got heal from this Signet. But also heal from this Arcana threat. And heal from this water threat. Dodging also creates a spell that heals you too. Never activate this thing net unless you are going to die. Never. About utility skills. Lightning Flash is an instant cast teleport. It's great to escape, to purchase someone, to get to a tricky spot or to combo with another skill. I'll show you at the, this at the end of the video. Primordial Stance is a skill that applies condition to nearby enemies. Condition depends on your current attunement. I recommend to use it in fire and air to apply burn on vulnerability. Using this stance also grants you stability thanks to river threat. Twist of Fate is a stun breaker. It's not only 
not only stone break but also one second evade so it's like a dodge you can stun break but also avoid all incoming damage for one second it's a must have on life savior on top of that as a stance it also gives you stability with self is the river elite when you activate it your attunement cooldown decreases from four seconds to two seconds this means you can switch more often and get more boon or heal in addition, you gain one bonus for attuning to new elements. In fire, plus 20% condition damage. In water, plus 20% bone duration. In air, plus 50% speed. It's really like a free super speed. And in earth, plus 300 toughness. It makes you way more tanky. You should go earth at the beginning of this spell. When should you use this skill? Basically, each time you are facing a difficult fight. You can see that the bonus are mostly defensive, especially in Earth. So if you feel too squishy, use it. Don't be afraid of using it. When you'll be dead, it will be too late. You have 20 seconds to attune to all elements. This will end the distance and grant perfect wave. You have 10 seconds to cast this new skill, which is a massive control of nearly 3 seconds. You can combo this skill with Dagger Earth 5 like this. Cast it, then immediately cast Shining Earth for a devastating attack. This elite skill is also a stun, so it also grants stability. Now let's review all sword skills. In fire, the auto attack is death and DPS and burn at last attack. It's one of your best auto attack with sword. Skill 2 is a very good skill. It's hard to hit your enemy because uh, the animation is very slow and it's easy to dodge. But it's your best skill to combo with. When you start the attack, it's a leap. You can use it in a fire field to gain a fire war, or use it in a water field to heal. But when you end the attack, it's the fire field for two seconds. On top of that, the pace is good and cooldown is very low. Skill 3 is sadly nearly useless. This is an advice to you. As a sword weaver, never double attune to the same element. Why? Because first of all, most of sword skills we are bad. Then because if attuned to a single element, you don't benefit fully from this stretch. And gain only once the bonus stat instead of two. You also get stuck for four more seconds in the same attunement. Your survives come from switching attunement, so don't attune to the same element with this bit. Anyway, this third skill is good depth, but really you will ne nearly never use it. In water, the auto attack is bad depth on small hill. Use it only if you are on CD with your other skills. Your skill too. It's just your best skill on sword, and the best skill of elementalist. Because it's an evade. That means it's a dodge. That lasts nearly 2 seconds, with a 10 seconds cooldown. It's not only a dodge, it's a water field that lasts 4 seconds. This means you have time to blast inside with earth skills or dodge inside. It's also a small heal and provide regeneration boon, which clean one condition. This is your life savior skill. Water skill 3 is useless. You don't double attune to water, so you won't get it. And it's good like that. It's a very small DPS. You can see in the description that it's a heal, but the heal only comes if you hit your enemy with this skill. And when you need a heal, you don't go melee, so you cannot hit. It's a useless skill, very useless. In air, auto attack is good and provides swiftness, which can one condition. Skill 2 is a very cold skill teleports you to your opponent and with a leap skill, so you can also combo with it. It's a stun skill, which can interrupt your enemy and will give you super speed, which, which also cure and condition. You can use it to combo to get closer to your enemy to escape from a fight by targeting someone in the opposite direction or to interrupt your enemy. Skill 3 is a good skill, which provides lots of DPS and vulnerability but it can hit only one person. And the fact 
that it hit multiple multiple times makes you vulnerable to retaliation. So be careful. In Earth, auto attack offers decent DPS on blade. Skill 2 is great. It's like water 2 on evade skill for one second. Another free dodge. It's good DPS, but it's also a blast finisher with a low cooldown. It's perfect to combo with Water 2. Use Water 2, then switch Earth to Blast in the Waterfield. It's your best defensive skill with Water 2. Skill 3 is great DPS, but you cannot move while casting it, and you need to double attune. Let's talk about the dual attack skills. Fire Earth 3 is one of your best skills. It offers a barrier each second plus some small DPS on a 1 second burn each second. You should ca cast it first, as soon as it's available. Fire Water 3 is an ok DPS skill which offers burn and chill. Fire Earth 3 is a very great skill because it applies a lot of burn. You can reach 6 stacks of burn. Use it when the enemy is not moving, when he is under control for example, to apply the maximum of burn stack. Water Earth 3 is good DPS but can only hit one target. It's interesting because it's not a melee skill. You can use it range. You got two ranged skill on sword, this one and the next one. The Water Earth 3. But sadly it's not a good skill because the DPS is very very low. Finally, Air Earth 3 is a great control skill. Which gives you great DPS but it's really hard to hit the enemy with because you need to be very very close. Let's speak about rotations. As a river, you have to be attuned to two elements at the same time. Some elements fit better together than others. When your main attunement is fire, the best attunement to switch after this one are air and earth. You should avoid water. If you switch water, your main attunement would be water. Your secondary attunement would be fire. The different skills don't fit together. You got here one fire field and one water field, but you cannot interact with this field. If you are on fire and switch air, you can use fire 2 to put a fire field, then go air and use air 2 to get a fire aura like this. If you are on fire and switch earth, you can use fire 2 to put a fire field, then go earth and use skill 2 to get some might stack. When your main attunement is water, you can switch to all at once. If you need to heal, you can go Earth to be more tanky, but you can also go to the other attunement to heal and be more offensive. When you are on water, your skill 2 is a water field. With this water field, you can combo with each attunement to heal. Here, I go fire. I use my water 2 skill, then I switch fire. On your fire 2, which is a leap. It will heal me and make some DPS. Here, if I go air, I use water 2 skill, I switch air and use air 2 which is also a leap. It teleports me to the enemy and it also heals me. And if I think I go earth, I use water skill 2, I switch earth and use earth 2 which is a blast and heal me. You can also dodge in earth in your water field for an extra blast. As you can see, you can combo with Water Skill 2 with all attunements. When your main attunement is air, you can switch to fire, then you can use this combo that reminds me the old Dago Dago Elementalist. Air 4, air 5 to knock back, then fire 2 and dual attack skill 3. When your main attunement is earth, it fits with everything. You can go water, then you can use water 2, plus us 4 5, they are 2 blast finishers. To sum up, the best attunements that fit the best together. Fire Air or Air Fire for an offensive option. Fire Earth or Earth Fire for a boss offensive and defensive option. And Water Earth for a defensive option. I'm going to show you 3 combos you can make as a Sword Dagger River. This first combo is an offensive one, big DPS on might stack. First you have to be in earth fire. 
Cast Dual Skill 3 to get some barrier on burn. Cast Fire 4 to get a fire field. Use Fire 5 to DPS. Then dodge into your fire field and use Earth 2. You will gain 6 might stacks with this double blast. Then switch Fire. You are now Fire Earth. Use Fire 2, which is a leap, into your fire field to get a fire aura. Fire 2 is also a fire field. Use Earth 4 to blast and control your enemy. Then immediately use Earth 5 for a devastating shining Earth with a lot of mild stock. This second combo is optimal to DPS but is harder, you have to be very very fast. Start with fire on main attunement. Cast fire 2, then fast switch to air and use air 2. You gain a fire aura. Use dual skill 3, it applies burns. Use fire 5, fire grab. Then use fire 4, it's a fire field. Now you need to be fast. Immediately dodge. And while dodging, switch to earth attunement. It's a blast into the fire field. Use also earth 2 into fire field and as a blast. Use dual skill 3 to CC your enemy. Then switch fire and use fire 2 into your fire field. You gain another fire aura. And created a new 2 second fire field. Now use Earth 4 to CC, then 5 for a devastating Chonic Earth with 20 mind stack. This third combo is a way to get full health quickly. You are in water Earth. You can first dodge while in water to get some heal. Use water 2, you created a water field. Use Earth 4 inside, it's a blast. Then switch Earth on fast dodge inside water field and use Earth 2. It's two more blasts inside. You also can activate water 4, a frost aura, to reduce incoming damage. Use water 5, it's a heal. Now you should be full health. You can switch to fire. You are now fire Earth and can use your dual skill 3 to get some barrier. And you are ready to start an offensive combo to DPS. That's all for Sword. If you want some more advanced tactics for fighting with Sword, go at the end of the video. Now let's speak about the staff build. Here are the weakness and the strong point of this weapon. Staff is a selfish weapon with low support. You don't have a lot of defensive skills. You cannot play it solo. You need a group to help you, to protect you, to buff you. You are very squishy. Your survive is about self-positioning in a good way. If you fail, you'll be dead. But in the other hand, Staff River offers the biggest DPS of the game. It's a multi-target weapon with insane large control long range. You are the master of the battlefield. You can kill, control, slow enemies with a 1000 on 200 range. Now the build. In the short build, all the threats are defensive. Here, all the threats are taken to increase your DPS. First, I'm taking Fire 3 1 1. The minor threat empowering flame buff your power while in fire entertainment. Try to stay in fire when you cast your DPS burst. Here, I'm taking Burning Fire. It's the free condition clean. I prefer it over Burning Precision, which is a very mediocre DPS addition. It's only 1 second burn on a 5 second cooldown. Powermancer's training is a must have. It's a 10% DPS rely on fire increase. It also reduces the cooldown of your fire skill. It's mandatory because your best DPS skills are in fire. Burning Rage increase of 10% your DPS versus burnt enemies. Persisting Flames is also mandatory. It will increase your fire field by 2 seconds. This means that Fire 2 Lava Front will take 2 more times, and also your Dual Skills Fire Earth 3. In air, I'm going 3 3 1. Ferocious Winds is a small DPS buff, you will gain like 10% critical damage. Tempest Defense will increase your DPS of 20% if enemy is under control which happens a lot in World vs. World large fights. 
Finally, ball to the heart will increase your DPS of 20% if enemy's life is under 50%. In river, I'm going 1 to 1. This is very different from sword. I'm taking superior elements. It increases my DPS on weakened enemies. But you also can take Master Fortitude if you feel you don't have enough life. Swift Revenge will increase your DPS from 7%. Elemental Polyphony will increase your statistics depending on your, on your current attunement. In Fire you gain more power, in Air you gain more precision. Finally, Elements of Welge is a massive DPS boost. You gain a lot of ferocity, but also gain 10% DPS when attuned to a single element. That means you need to double attune to the same element to get this buff for a small amount of time. If you want to get all the damage boost, boost you have to double attune to fire. As you can see, the staff builds work with damage modifiers to increase DPS. Power bonus if you are attuned to fire. 10% if you are attuned to fire. 10% if enemy is burning. Ferocity bonus. 20% if enemy is under control. 20% if enemy is low health. 15% critical chance if enemy is weakened. 7% DPS if you got the speed boon. Power bonus while I turn to fire. And ferocity bonus. Plus 10% DPS if double attuned to the same element. This is more than a 100% increase to DPS. Of course, all the damage modifiers won't proc at the same time, but you will always get few of them. This is how you can have a massive DPS. Let's talk about the gear. In PvE, survive is not a problem. You can take Berserker statistic for, to maximize your DPS. In World vs. World, you need some more defensive stats. You can use Marauders and Moths. This will add some vitality. You also can take one or two Soldier's Ring to get some toughness and extra vitality. The exact World vs. World build is in the description. In both game mode, I'm using Scholar Run. It's the best DPS option, even if you are not full health. Bloodlust and Force Sage in World vs. World impact on force in PvE. Let's talk about the skills. For healing, you have different options. Erken Brilliance is a good option for World vs. World because it's a very fast burst heal and also a blast finisher to use inside the water field. Etzer Renewal is also good if you have trouble with condition. Glyph of Elemental Harmony is good for all game mode, it's a very big heal. About utility skills, Lightning Flash is an Eastern cast teleport. It's great to escape, purchase somewhere to get to tricky spots, or to combo with another skill. I show you this at the end of the video. Signet of Fire is only here to increase your precision. This is a passive effect. It will add around 9% of critical chance. Never activate this signet. It's only a passive permanent DPS boost. Twist of Fate is a stun breaker. It not only stun break but also one second evade. So it's like a dodge. You get stun break but also avoid all incoming damage for one second. It's the most tough on a life savior. About the elite skill, I'm taking the Fire Grid Sword. It's this skill has massive DPS. Skill 5 is a big airway DPS that lasts 10 seconds. This elite also buff your power, so you can summon it right after casting Meteor Shower 55 to increase your DPS. Now, let's review together all staff skills. In Fire, the auto attack is far and away your best auto attack. Great DPS and great range. It's written 1000 or 200 range in description, but in fact it's more. You can hit from 1000 on 500. You can use it while waiting for your cooldown. Skill 2 is one of your best skills. Very low cooldown. It will attack 6 times. Cast it as soon as it's available. Skill 3 is sadly nearly useless. The best is inexistent. 
Skillful is a quick rollback and is good to escape if you're in trouble. You also can use the About Face button to go faster. I explain you these tips at the end of the video. Skill 5 is the best DPS skill of the whole game. You will hit 24 times with Meteor on a huge area for a few seconds, doing massive damage. You can start casting it, then teleport to get safe, because the casting time is very very long, making you vulnerable. In water, the auto-attack is useless, unless you want to heal a bit your team, but it's really really poor. Skill 2 is massive DPS, but also a blast, so you can use it in your water field, your skill 3 on 5 are water field, or in your frost field, skill 4, to gain, to gain heal or a frost tower. Skill 3 is a small heal on, on the water field. Skill 4, it chills lots of enemies on a huge area. It's great to slow them. It's also a frost field. This attack don't make any damage. So, you won't enter the fight mode if you use it. Skill 5 is a huge water field. It's the best one to blast inside with your team. It also clean conditions. In air, the auto attack is okay DPS on the pack enemies. Skill 2 is a good DPS skill. Skill 3 is a control. You can push enemy and make them fall down from a tower or from a cliff. Skill 4 is great. It applies swiftness to you on your team, but also cure you on your team from condition movement, like chill or immobilize. So you can use the skill out of fight to speed up your team, or in combat to clean condition. Skill 5 inflict stun on damage when enemy enters or exits its area. It's a great skill for world versus world. In Earth, auto attack is bad, small DPS, only one target, forget it. Skill 2 is good DPS on the blast. Skill 3 will reflect projectiles. Use it if someone is attacking you from range. Skill 4 is a massive control. Enemies attempting to cross the area of effect will be knocked back. It's great to prevent enemies from crossing a position or a gate. Skill 5 is very bad DPS, but it applies Immobilize, so it can be useful to make your target vulnerable for 2 seconds. Let's talk about the dual attack skills. Fire Earth is your best dual skill. It works like Fire 2, a good DPS that will take for 6 seconds. It's also a fire field. Fire Water is not very good, it's a small DPS on a small hill. Fire Air is a great burst skill doing massive damage. Water Earth is a bit like Water 4, but instead of chill, it will cripple on slow enemies in a large area. It also makes small damage. Water Earth is a small damage skill, but it will hit a lot of people. Finally, Earth Air is your biggest damage skill on the single target. You can one-shot enemy, but be careful. You can't move while casting it, so you are vulnerable. In addition, it's a projectile, so it can be reflected, and you can get one shot by your own skill. Now I'm going to show you how to DPS a Staff River. Here is your three best DPS skills. Fire 5, Fire 2, and Dual Attack, Fire Earth. I'm going to show you a good basic rotation to DPS in World vs. World. It's also a good way to DPS in PvE, but not the optimal way at all. So, if you want to do red or high level fractal, I'd, I advise you to check Quantify or Snowcrow Seat to see the own rotations of build. So, here is a DPS, DPS rotation. It's for World vs. World, but also works in PvE. PvE. Start with Fire Earth. You can cast Earth 4 before if you need to CC. First, cast Dual Skill 3, then Fire 2. Now, switch Fire. You are double attuned to Fire, which pokes the buff Element of Watch. It's a 10% DPS increase. Cast Meteor Shower Fire 5. To get even more damage on Fire 5, you can cast your Elite, it will increase your power. When this combo is done, you can use other skill to DPS, while waiting for your cooldown. 
air, earth dual attack. Fire, air, earth two, water two are good defense skill. You also can use fire one or air one. Also remember to cast fire two as soon as available. And to always use your fire while fully attuned to fire to benefit from the damage boost. Here are all the skills to control or slow your enemies. You have two skills to stun or block them. R5, R5 and Earth 4. You also have two skills to slow them. Water 4 and Water Earth dual attack. That's all for stuff. Now I'm going to show you a few advanced tactics and tips in fight for swap on stuff. How to fight versus condition. It's always difficult to fight against a Scourge or a Condi Masma. How to deal with condition as a Sword Weaver? Remember, thanks to Water Grandmaster Threat, you cure one condition each time you gain the regeneration boon. In addition, thanks to the Weaver Grandmaster Threat, you cure one condition each time you gain speed or super speed. So let's check together all the skills that will cure one condition. Dagger Water 5, Dodge in Water, Attune to Water, Attune to Air, Air 1, Air 2, Dagger Air 5, Twist of Fat. What is the common point of all these skills? They are all in the air on water attunement. So, if you want to cure condition, just swap between air and water and just do your skills. When you have cured your conditions, you can go fire or earth to attack. Then if you need to cure more condition against, go back to water on earth. On air. All your condition remove are on air on water, and you don't have condition remove at all on fire on earth. If you still have trouble with condition, take this river threat. Each dual skill will purge one condition, so you will have nearly 15 different ways of curing conditions since then. How to fight versus power build as a sword dagger river. First, remember that this build offers a lot of free extra dodge thanks to evade skills. You have four of them. Water 2, Air 5, Earth 2 and Twist of Fate. Time them at the good moment to evade the enemy burst. Versus power you need some toughness. Remember this, thanks to River Minor Threat, you gain toughness while being attuned to Earth. Your elite skill also provides you more than 300 toughness for 20 seconds. The best way to heal and tank is using the water on Earth attunement. Then fire Earth or fire Air to attack. How to heal as a Sword Weaver? Weaver is a class that has a more different way to heal. Attuning to water will heal you. Dodging in water will heal you. Water 2 create a water field blast or leap inside for heal. Sourcing mist will heal you for 200 per second. Regeneration bone will heal you for 200 per second. This arcana threat will heal you for 400 each time you swap attunement. Finally, signet of restoration will heal you for each skill. So, how to burst heal? Just have a look. I get full life in 2 seconds. Switching water heals me. But, switching attunement also contests a skill, so it pokes in of restoration. It's also an attunement strap, so it heals me thanks to Arcana Threat. In the meantime, I dodge while being in water. This creates a spell that heals me. But this dodge also contests a skill, so proc Synect of Restoration. Then I use Water 2 and Blast inside to heal me. During this combo, I also get Regeneration on Sourcing Mist that heals me. This is how you can burst heal in 2 seconds. How to combo with your Teleport skill? Teleport is instant cast and won't interrupt channeling skills. So, you can start channeling skills and use teleport before the end of the skill. This works for Earth Dagger 5 like this. It also works with Staff Fire 5 Meteor Shower to get safe while casting Meteor Shower. 
you can also use a control skill like air dagger 5. Teleport and immediately use your skill. You have few skills that do a retreat behind you. You have a trick to go on the opposite side if you want to surprise your enemy or to be faster. This works with Starfire 4 Binding Retreat. The normal skill is like this. Here it is with the trick. How does it work? First, go on your settings and check that your use either mouse button to change direction is disabled. Also check your about face button. I bound it with a little E to make it easily available. Now hold your left mouse button. You can walk and move the camera like this. Press the about face button, then immediately activate your skill. And that's it. It also works with Swordwater 2 skill. Okay, last tip for you guys, how to boon stack. You can stack boon before a fight in PvP or World vs World. Since last update, switching attunement gives you might. And thanks to this Akana threat, you gain a boon when attuning to an element. So basically, before a fight, while walking, just constantly swap between two attunements. The best way is between water and air. Switch water gives you regeneration. Switch air gives you speed, which gives you regeneration thanks to river threat. So you can stack speed, you can stack regeneration, you can stack might before a fight. Your elite skill decrease your attunement cooldown from 4 to 2 seconds. This means that you can get twice more boon. Starting a fight with permanent speed and regeneration is a very strong advantage. Remember also that your elite, while being in water, increase your bone duration to make it even more efficient. That's all for the river guide. I truly hope you liked it. If you have any questions, just add me in the commentary section below. I will answer to everything. If you like this guide, you can subscribe. It will ma I will make more guides for Elementalist in the future. I'm also posting a lot of videos of gameplays. Here is a video of gameplay in World vs World as Sword Dagger River. Have a nice day everyone. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Bye.